can't do square decimal degrees. You can, but it's nothing. It's a number, it doesn't say anything. You can't, you can't say five decimal square degrees. This doesn't work. Huh? Not in our systems. So that's the reason why you need to move and transform this data, breach it, it's called projection, into that setup. We're not worried about this right now. It's need, you need to know that it can completely mess up your work. If you deal with decimal degrees all the time and you want to measure distances, or you suddenly say, hey, this land is larger than this land, then uh, good night. You can go home. Uh, it's not working. Uh, so, if you look at this right now, what's wrong? Let me show you a more extreme. New tool, new learnings. I will double click this. I have more things to learn. More tabs. This is source, this is where my data is located. See that? She has class, she has data folder, big roads. I have all these different tables, the tabs. I want to go to symbology. This is the only thing which I'm worried about right now. You need to explore this sometimes. Huh? I right click here and go to properties. It's one way, symbology. Or I double click here on the label of the name. It pops up. Two ways to get. If you're I'm not sure yet where what is, right click usually gives you the options of all the tools that are available for that specific item. See right now here there's a certain tools that are not available that are created out. So I go to properties, symbol, I gonna make it really thick. Refined highway, color is red, 3.4 in width, and you can hear you go in. Remember the halo effect? We will come back. Edit symbol, line properties. See, the halo doesn't even show up here. Here it is. And I click OK. I just click highway, predefined, will be super red, OK, and OK. And it didn't pop up. Why didn't it pop up? Huh? No. Let's do it again. I can even double click on a symbol. Symbol, double click on a symbol. Yeah. Change to expressway. Click on it. Boom. Change to expressway, but I don't see it here. What's wrong? Let's do it again. I right click, slow way. Right click, properties, symbology, single symbol. Because I don't want, I treat it all equal. I don't care. Everything, everything which is here as a geometry is the same. Well, let's change this again. Let's make this really thick. Five, six. Can hit apply, but I also can hit OK. Doesn't pop up. Why don't, why don't I see big roads in big yellow here? Is it because you didn't see it? So you have it under a layer. Because where do I have it on the layer? Under the bottom. I have it on the bottom. Oh. It's covered up. Mine is on there because mine is on the top. So the order of where I put the layer, and I just mouse click, link, link, left mouse click, and drag and drop. Now I change the position of the stream. If you don't know exactly where it's in and what's going on, there's a function on off. Here, checkbox, on, off, on, off. Without moving, the order of the layer, off and on, helps sometimes to find what's going on. Yeah? Does it have to be in the order you have it? Uh, yeah, because that's the display order, how you will see it. How do I move it? You click on it, 
with the left mouse, and hold down left mouse button, and your chest will move to the top. See that? It's supposed to be where? I click on it, and I just move it here. Got this? You guys have it in the back too? Yeah. So with this little confusion, I changed the setting of the roads, symbology of the roads. That kind of lilac tone in the census plot kind of irritates me. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much pretty close to pink. So what I'm going to do again is I change the symbology for the tenses more. I right click on it, I go down to properties, and change the symbol. I click on the symbol, and you can see now I have different predefined setups. Earlier it was highway, interstate as lines. Now I have like these boxes giving me predefined setups how this will look like if I click on it. Yeah? Also, you can see this one has no outline but a fill. This one is hollow, so it's no color inside but outline. And then lay out a fill with a different color outline, the different flavors. Yeah? And you can use them, use those, or you can readjust them. Um, or you can also scroll down. And you can see different shading, different pieces like grassland, swamp, catching you know, patterns. Oh. And if you click here on style references to confuse you a little bit more tonight, <laughs> you can find hundreds of other ones. For the type of industry you're working in, petroleum versus mining as an example. You know? Versus 3D stuff, there's actually street furniture and trees and vehicles, so we can use that for points if we want. But by now we're looking at just simple census blocks. What we're going to do is we're going to do hollow. So point four is the line, no fill, and I want to use that as a crowd, as a backdrop context, and change the color here. So if I click here on outline color, just click on it. You get like a predefined selection of colors you can choose. We're using just something like 40 or 50 percent gray. Okay, and K, and change the settings. So really not complicated, but very overwhelming because you just did this the second time in your life. <laughs> Let's do a third time. Okay. Well, we have take the address points here. <clears throat> what we can do now is we double click on the layer to pop up. So we save this right click, scroll down properties to that. Change the symbol. I can see different setups. Huh? I do this again. I go here, I double click, double click on it, should pop up as layer properties. I go here to features, single symbol, click on this one, and again you see predefined styles you can choose from. So we just found something really funny. Just found reference styles. Yeah? Let's do, well, let's do street furniture, 3D furniture, and click OK. So now I have all this funny looking stuff. Yeah? Let's find a payphone. I have no idea if this works. This is just being humorous with that software. At 9.30 we can make jokes. Yeah? And click OK. And now I'm moving this a little bit and click Apply. Do I add to styles? Did it? No. Here, the reference styles. I scroll down on 3D, 3D furniture. I just click here. I checkbox it. And yeah, you can actually search for this too. So if you search for hospital, 
If you search for hospital, this might take a while. But you get all different symbols available with your license in hospitals. So if you want to do a funny looking map or a little bit more informative on, remember we had this data analyst versus public. Yeah? For the data analyst, if you want to do some geoprocessing, proximity work, um, market report on hospitals, a point, like a regular circle point is fine. If you would do that in a presentation to your council meeting, you'll probably use this to show all the hospitals and uh, medical facilities in Broward County. You probably pop up this yeah? versus this versus just a point. But we're staying, we're staying with the um, telephone booth. If I hit the fly, it changed the symbol, and if I zoom in. Depending on the screen, uh, doesn't work with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's change this back. Again, yeah, gotta be a little bit humorous. This is, by the way, how you find new functions and fun, fun things. You literally have a goofy moment and you say, hey, where is that at? Just for the fun, can you find dolphins? You know, to map out the players. <laughs> yeah. So let's just, let's say, take this guy here. Circle three, circle with the dog. No? And we have changed the symbology, but you also see if we zoom out, it changes the size because there's certain tools and certain levels you can adjust for the symbology if it scales the symbol or not. We will do that sometime later. Summary right now. We changed the symbology. We did add data. Census block data as polygons. We did add roads as polyline data. We added address points as point data. We changed for all three the symbology. Yeah? What was the last one that we chose? Uh, circle three. Yeah, so if I change it, I can also change the size of it and adjust. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's circle three or four. It's the process. Yeah. Okay, let's save this guy. We have, uh, we have done all this work, we did not save it yet. So if you run out of energy with your with your battery or whatever, you know, the work is not safe. You can click here, save, or we go file, save, save as. Different ways. We will jump to the location of our school stuff, which is the Z drive, GIS class. And then we change this and call this basically session two and hit save. So we just saved a GIS file in our work folder, in our project folder. That means our catalog would see it. So if I go to our catalog back, she has class, what do I need to do? Refresh. F5 or right click, refresh. I now have a file called session 2, and I'm in preview tab, and it's actually loading my data, because it's part of the preview. Yes, please. It won't allow me to save that session. I don't know, we need to save it in the folder. In our folder, chess class. Double click, double click. Uh -oh. Save now. Yeah. Yes. Because in the C drive, in the root, we're not allowed to save anything. Okay. In a normal world, you're not allowed to do that. How come I can't see that? 
because you may have this problem different. Go back to your other Does it only say <laughs> the view of the map? Uh, you can zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is just a very good zoom. So it actually does a screenshot of it. It's faster to find it and brief review it. Yeah? And hit OK. So you if you do you have to manually do that, you can't set that as a feature. It does usually do that then. So if you do content, it actually should present the review. This should be faster then. Yeah? But your question. Let's click this out so that I'm here right now in the so-called data view. Let's click back to layout view. This is what you see in our catalog. So this is the, now the section of my map I'm interested in to work with. Yeah? This is how the map will show on this one page if I would print this out. Yeah? And in doing so, if I move this around, I change the, 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 the sizing of the map, but not yet the scale. It's still capped at about 85,000. I can use, let's say, a standard here, the function scales. I can use 1 to 1,000. Pops in really close, that's like a neighborhood level. Or I can use 1 to 100,000, you can see that more extend, more the same thing, one inch on the map equals this amount in the real world. Yeah. So this is a little bit much, let's do 1 to 24,000 as an example, let's do this map a little bit larger. Yeah. So we have this kind of interstate here, a little bit, I change, this is the important part, confusing part. I have here layer. A plus, minus, and a pan. But you can see the difference. It has the hand is over the map of a, over a paper document. Because if I use this, a pan, the whole thing. If I use this hand, this is data. If I click this one, I click rip in the map. Oh, okay. Which one is the map? This one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I also zoom in now inside that map frame, map data frame, like this. 
So if your data doesn't show, if you're getting confused, make sure if you're in, zooming in out here or there, or are you actually dealing with your data? Oh, you got this? What would be the reason you lay out label deeper? Like the entire thing, right? Because you're in data view and not in layout. Sometimes you have to go wiggle the whole thing. All right, next really important tool, little tiny trick to keep you sane. Yeah. The book talks about so-called spatial bookmarks. You know, a bookmark from an internet browser is if you bookmark your page, you will always come back to that one. We do have bookmarks for our mapping experience as well. They are maintained, not as wonderful as in the Firefox or something, but you can do this. If I find that this is really good in the looks and dimensions of my mapping project, let's say this is the one I want to have, different patterns. No? I go now here to bookmark, click on this, and say create bookmark. It will shoot a bookmark for exact this location. It's not going to bookmark all your color settings. It's setting your location. It's like, and you can't, you will be able to come back to that. It's like you use your iPhone and the mapping direction thing and you type in the second time the address you want to go and it says, let's say 100 main and it auto, -fill, auto completes that and it knows where you want to go no? so let's call this test 1 because we're playing around and hit ok if I go back down here to the data view Data view. See this? The page layout is gone, and I'm slightly off where I was actually looking at right now because it's different. Let's say I zoom completely out, and I know a little bit the area. I work and data mine somewhere here. I have a question about, let's say, IKEA. This is about where IKEA is. Yeah? Yeah. Interstate. This is this could be like should be IKEA here. So I want to and hit escape for all these buttons and bubbles bubbling up. Yeah. Again escape. So you break the display. There should be thousands of green points. Escape will stop and cancel this. Alright. So this is the location I'm interested in. I'm Exploring information, like remember the information button here, identify, I click on a random point, I got sidetracked with something. Or I'm working on a large data set at multiple locations at the same time, because you want to know every apartment type or every mile marker type. Yeah? Or you're interested in work only on, five, on areas that are larger than 10 acres. So you're hopping around all the time. And then you say, oh man, how do I get back to the old location? Well, you bookmarked it, did you? Use bookmarks. Test one. Jump back. Let's do this again, again in an extreme case. I move far, 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 far away. I go back to my map view. And the map shows it. And this is funny, it should actually move up. But you can bookmark it. Jump. 
this is the one I'm interested in. Again, this is you're working with two tools at the same time. Like you work on two screens and you move things around. Map, data view. I pan this one towards the airport and coastline. Huh? Looks like coastline. In my layout view, the map has changed as well. So all this adjustments and tweaking and arranging because you want to put this on one page has failed right now. If you did bookmark the area of interest the way you want it, jump back, refresh, you're there. Saves you tons of time. Got it. Was it a got it? I have answers. Actually, I'll ask you after the class. Go ahead. All right. So, any questions about how to move around in the map? Yeah, what's your question? Any questions? Zooming in and out and not. Change the size of your, your points. Yeah. Go like four. And you assume in with 50,000 percent that might be a problem. So escape here again and click on the zoom and say 100. One of us. One of us. So this is why I like GIS classes when you have interaction. So we have just a small problem right now. Let's say layout toolbar disappears. You can actually track and drop those toolbars here, up there. It can happen very fast, very easy. Exactly. So you carefully hover over the dotted line and you can rearrange your toolbars. You, know, you can track them out or you can set them aside however you want to prepare your workspace. How do you make them bigger? They are standard size, Bridget. On your, on your, on your, on your, Why is the microscopic? But in your, in your case, you need to change the resolution on your screen. Got it. Okay. Huh? They're yeah. all coming in standard size. Here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Like it was here, right? Ready for two more funny things? Yeah. Two more fun things? Yeah. It's important. It's part of the assignment. Huh? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Remember our census blocks? Let's go back here to the data view. Data view. Let's get disable the address points because they're just annoying at this moment right now. Like lock, unlock them or on off them. Let's zoom out a little bit. We can do this with our mouse wheel or we do one to one hundred thousand. That's a good overview here. You also can see that the big roads right now are also annoying because they keep being so white. I do the on-off here as well because I really want to take a look closer at the census blocks. Yeah. In planning and real estate, social demographic data, usually it's the census stuff that's interesting. We know from our ARC catalog experience that we have 
no population data, but we have something we call a water ten and a land ten amount of land. So how do we find this here? How do we get the attribute table to pop up in our arc map? We click on this, right click on the census plot. And there's something that's called open attribute table. And this looks pretty much like this, does it? No? If I right click on a layer, I see menu options popping up for that specific layer type. Point, polygon, polyline. No? So now I'm going to open up the attribute table. And I warn you, it might float around or it might pop into one of those so-called dock windows. If I do open attribute table, this should pop up like this. And if you move this around, you can see those um, bar, uh, the pointers. That's how you would dock it in. So if I by accident do this, it pops it in like this. Or I drag and drop it out again. And you can see how this shifts. This is probably the most annoying thing in my GIS life. If you happen to have a, this is for the advanced person, for the person who really wants to have windows next to each other, not overlapping. If you have a second screen or a big screen enough, like Chelsea and Rosie on your computers, what you can do is, if you deal with data, you can totally put this here on the side. I don't really see all of this, but we have a little bit more. So if you have even a second screen, you could completely pop, if this would work on this computer, you could have on one screen the whole data, and on the other screen you have the map, which helps with a few things. Let's try this, that you will see at least the FID on the screen and remove the map here on the side. This is kind of an answer to Jason's question earlier. How do I find and select elements in my map? <clears throat> First of all, I have the identifier tool or inspector tool that I I can click on a random element and you can see how it pops it highlighted it, this element and I can find it and identify it on the tables here I identify and I click on any random census block here to get this table information and the other pop up but now you can see this one here. Block number 2013, if I click on this guy, the map actually flashes it. See that? It pinpoints down where my selected block is. If I would happen to select multiple blocks, because I squished over like this, zoop, like the whole area, did you see that? I'm going to select here the circuit area. Drag and drop, zoom in, and it will flash all that intersect, touch the boundaries. Whoop. I now have multiples selected in my inspector and can look up every one how it changes. That's just for browsing. Now, I'm going to be bold and say, I'm going to take this tool, which looks like bluish, highlighted with an arrow, and I hover over it and it says select feature. If I select the feature, my cursor changes. Can you see that? And I click randomly here in this area. Let me zoom in so you can, you might be in a different area. I randomly click this one, this one, this one, in with this. See how I overlap over those seems like three? If I do this, it highlights an area. So now, 
drew and falls of your chair as well. I said three areas. The system now tells me I have actually five selected. So there's something funky going on, or I did not see the other two because they have been so small or digitizing how the data was created is false. Huh? But by a funny coincidence, this one highlighted. Can you see that in the table? In my data attribute table, I have a selected file. It also says down here five of the almost 22,000 are selected. Because what you do in the map impacts your table and vice versa. Let's take a look at the table. <coughs> Move this over, make it bigger. And there are certain buttons here on the top. Can you see those? There's clear selection. Do not press them. Yeah? There's no undo? No. There's no undo in this program? Yay, nay. <laughs> there's, there's an undo here in the edit part, but not, not in this one. So now I go down here, and it says, show all the records and show selected records. See that? We press selected records. And bam, my big table. Or you might have only one selected. Yeah? All right, let's do this a little bit more. Let's keep this here on show only selected. Move this out. I'm still here on the select feature. And I select more than that. Now we can see I'm suddenly showing 45 selected ones. I have them still highlighted on the map because this is how I stand by default. My map will look like if it's selected. I can change the color if you don't like it, but it's better. No? And I can see 45 are right now selected. So remember the statistics tool? You can do the statistics tool in here. So if I zoom over here and right click on the land, all land 10, I have different options again. And I can do statistics. And for the 45 selected, for only the 45 I have selected here in the demo, I can see the minimum, the maximum, the sum, and the mean. And remember when I told you, okay, you should see a little bit of distribution there? You can actually see where the majority count is here on the smaller numbers, and then the higher values are somewhat rippling around. Yeah? Wow. Well, that was one of the fun things. I need two more minutes, and everyone is going to be so happy. Then everyone will show up on Tuesday in the office hours. <laughs> if I want to make funny looking maps, I need to find a way how to define my colors for the map. Yeah? I'm clicking here, clear selected features. Yeah? Click it, and the selection is gone. I have changed the dots, I have changed the roads. I have not changed yet really the census blocks. Last thing, and this is completely repetitive from chapter two. Chapter two does this 20 times. If I go for properties, on symbology, we change symbol, single symbol. All are equal. Let's separate them. We know, we know that, we know that we can display data in, in different ways. <clears throat> and I want to do quantities, graduated colors, and we will do this next time, more and more. And I will choose the value, land, yeah, yeah, we know, and we have we don't care about the selection process, but
but we just selected all lands from zero to this color and click OK. And if we zoom out and out and out, we see that the larger the shape, the larger the amount of lands. Yeah. This is how we just use useless data for a less useless example. Can you tell that again? Uh, I'm not simple. And uh, for simple categories. And I right click on here, I do properties, quantities, or symbology, quantities, greater rate, colors, okay. and I can now, let's say, amount of water. Because it's the other part, uh, change the color scheme, look at this. You can play with the amount of colors, let's say water, let's say bluish, less water, a lot of water, and hit OK. I get a, uh, an and it will change. Yeah? I get an yeah? We'll take a look at that. I'm extremely happy that everyone has a running chess right now over the course of the rest of this class sessions I will take care of your chess knowledge I think you solved the technical problems okay so until next week save yeah save whatever stage you are so if you look at the syllabus, don't die. If you look at the syllabus here, this is, this is a lifesaver, guys, please. If you look at the syllabus here, it says next week there is an assignment due. Let's push this by one week. So we have a full class session to have you guys get more confident with the software. You actually know where the tools are. You have time to do the exercises that are demanded or need or needed for the assignment. Yeah? In the book, you need to do the book work. Yeah? We push this by a week, it gives us more practice time, and we are able really to put our own dots on the map with digitizing. Because that's next week the big new learning piece. The next week we repeat a lot and add a few more things to it. And then again, repeat a lot, add more things to it. It's like making cookies. Next week we do the icing on the cookies and then the changing type of cookies. Yes. No, we can push that too. I might push this not to the to that Thursday, I might push it to a Monday so you get a little bit more time. And I can I tweak those. Yeah? The reason you have you have starting knowledge right now, but not yet the real knowledge I wanted to have you sitting in the assignment because we got caught up with technical problems last week. So remember when I told you we're going to have some tweaking. I can tweak content, and I can tweak the deadlines, and or the amount of what I ask you in the assignment. So between those two, we will make this happen. I think we need to push this by a week, and we push this by two or three days, and I tweak it a little bit in the intensity. Uh -huh. Good call, thank you. Have a good night, safe travels, exercise and practice, guys.